Okay, parametric vector form. Let's do this. This is very important. Comes up a lot in this class. You gotta get good at writing solutions to linear systems in parametric vector form. Okay, so we're given this linear system of three equations in four unknowns. This is the same one from the earlier video that I did. But now we want to write the solution in parametric vector form. And then part B of this problem is that we want to write um, any solution to the system. And spoiler alert, there will be infinitely many to choose from. Okay, so what is the what is the first step to writing the solution in parametric vector form? You want to represent the system in an augmented matrix and then row reduce that augmented matrix to reduce row echelon form. So I'm going to pause the recording and come back with those two matrices. Okay, so we've represented the original system with this augmented matrix and then we do row operations and we get a different augmented matrix which represents a different system but it has the same solution set. But now the matrix is in reduced row echelon form, so perfect. So really quick, I just want to discuss what a free and basic variable is because that's really important and it'll come back in just a sec. So if you remember, this is the x1 column, the x2 column, x3 column, and x4 column. And then this is the right-hand side, the constants. So if a one of these variables, if its column in the augmented matrix has a pivot, so really quick, here are our two pivots. It's the first non-zero non entry in each row. So if a variable's column in the augmented matrix has a pivot, then that unknown variable is called a basic variable. If, on the other hand, the variable's column in the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form does not have a pivot, like here, x3 and x4, their columns don't have pivots. So x3 and x4 are called a free variable. And you'll see why they're called free variables um, in a little bit, but I just wanted to get those terminology out there so you are familiar with them. So the next step to writing the solution in parametric vector form is you want to go from the augmented matrix representation back to like these three uh, written out equations. So the first, so each row corresponds to a different equation. So um, let's let's uh, rewrite the first row as an equation. So we have one times x1 uh, plus zero times x2 plus three times x3 minus x4 equals negative three. And we have, from the second row, we have x2 plus 2x3 minus x4 equals negative 2. Okay, and then the last row doesn't give us any information. It just says 0 equals 0. So we have those two equations. What I want to be able to write, though, is I want to be able to write all four of our unknown variables in terms of our free variables. So how can we do that? Well, we have an equation that has x1 in it right here. We can move all the terms which has the free variables x3 and x4 to the right-hand side. So let's do that. Let's isolate x1. Let's isolate our basic variable. So we have x1 equals negative 3x3 plus x4 minus 3. And we have x2 from this second equation here. We can isolate it, and we get x2 equals negative 2x3 plus x4 minus 2. And then we have x3 and x4. So what do we do with those? x3 and x4, remember, are free variables. And so they can be whatever they want. This is why they're called free. So um, some people like parameterize the solution uh, using like they introduce new variables like s and t or something. But um, usually I would just say x3 equals whatever you want it to be. So I know it looks weird, but I'm just going to say x3 equals x3 and x4 equals x4. And the reason I'm doing this again is because they are free variables. So now we want to write the solution in parametric vector form. So now we got to write the, write these four equations as one equation with vectors. So we can write a vector with all of our variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, and set that equal to the right-hand side over here. So the first entry is negative 3x3 plus x4 minus 3, and x2 equals negative 2x3 plus x4 minus 2. x3 is a free variable, so we just say x3 equals x3. x4, same thing. Okay. Now we can break this up into multiple vectors um, that each share either um, x3 terms, x4 terms, or constant terms. So we're going to split it into three vectors. So we have negative 3x3, negative 2x3, x3, 0, so this vector has all the x3 terms, plus a vector with all the x4 terms. Uh, 
plus a vector with all of the um, constants. Okay, then the last step is we write, and, and keep in mind, uh, if we have an expression for this, this vector, which has all of our unknowns, then that's, a, that's, the, that's the solution set, right? Because we, we want to find out what all the unknowns are. And if we can express it like this, then we've found our solution set. So x1, x2, x3, x4 equals, then the last step is just factor out the free variables. So we have x3 times negative 3, negative 2, 1, 0, plus x4 times 1, 1, 0, 1, plus our constant vector. Okay, and just like that, I mean, you could box this up. That is our solution to the linear system written in parametric vector form. But a couple things. This uh, vector has another name, or you could write it a different way. If you, This is the augmented matrix representation of the original system. You could also have written it in the form AX equals B, the matrix equation. And if that were the case, B would be the this vector here, and x is the vector of all your unknowns, right? x1 through x4. So this is also the x vector. Okay. And also, I just want to take a second and mention, like, I wrote a whole bunch of extra steps that as you guys are doing parametric vector form in your homework and stuff, you'll get a lot quicker and a lot more efficient, and you'll be able to skip some of these. So those steps that I would skip as you get better is writing out these two equations here. I would jump from the row-reduced matrix, augmented matrix, straight into writing all four of your variables isolated and in terms of the free variables. So, and you can do that in your head, right? You would, you would get your row reduced matrix and you would say x1 equals, and then you can just move these terms over to the right hand side in your head, x2 equals. And then whenever you have free variables, you just set them equal to themselves. And then I would also probably be able to, uh, when you, when you practice it enough, you'll be able to write your x vector um, you could probably skip this step right here where you, you separate it into common terms and you could go straight from here to um, having factored out the free variables. Okay, so those are just tips on how to get faster with writing parametric vector form. Um, if you need to, don't skip any steps and just be very thorough with your work. You probably won't make any silly mistakes that way, so that's good too, but just in case you wanted to save time. Okay, so part B though, the last part, we want to write any solution to the system. So if you look down here, here's our general solution uh, written in parametric vector form. And remember, x3 and x4 are free variables. And I said I'd talk about why they're called free variables later. It's because you can pick anything you want for them, okay? They're not constrained. So x3 could be 0, it could be 7, it could be negative 2, it could be anything. It could be 2.5, x4, same thing. So let's make it easy on ourselves when we want to pick one particular solution and just say x3 equals 0 equals x4. So if we pick x3 to be 0, this term goes away. If we pick x4 to be 0, this term goes away. Right? These just become 0 vectors when you distribute the zeros. And then you just get your solution, x, from the matrix equation x equals b, is negative 3, negative 2, 0, 0. Meaning x1 equals negative 3, x2 equals negative 2, and then x3 and x4, like we picked them right here, are both 0. So let's go up and check and make sure that makes sense. x1 equals negative 3, x2 equals negative 2. Remember that. So negative 3 for x1, negative 2 for x2. So like this first equation, we get, and then x3 and x4 equals 0. So let's check. Negative 2 times negative 3, plus I'm doing this first equation right here, plus negative 2. And then x3 and x4 are both 0, so this has to equal 4. Is that the case? We get 6 minus 2 equals 4. Perfect. Second equation. It's got to work for all three equations. Negative, negative 3 plus negative 2. I'm doing this second equation here, plugging in for our unknowns that we found. Uh, x3 is 0, so we just get this equals 1. Is that true? We get 3 minus 2 equals 1. Perfect. Then the last one we have to check. x2, negative 2, and then x3 and x4 are 0. So does negative 2 equal negative 2? Yes, it does. So perfect. So that solution works, right? Now, you'll have to trust me. You could try this on your own. You could pick 7 for x3, negative 2 for x4. doesn't matter. 
and then you would simplify this into one vector and then each entry in that vector would tell you x1 through x4 you could plug those in to the original system and you'd get the same thing so that's the beauty of writing the solution set in parametric vector form because it's very easy to produce um, your solutions okay